surfing in 2016 is as all-inclusive as it's ever been. But it wasn't always like this. Every sport has its dark periods. In the late 90s and early 2000s saw the general populace stick to a strict diet of performance thrusters. Floating over any takeoff spot around the world today, it wouldn't be strange to find any combination of twin fins, singles, soft tops, logs, alias, bonzers, keels, hand plants, and girls who surf better than you. And what's not to like about that, but like so many good things do, this status quo really snuck up on us. So, how do we get here? All it takes is one person to make a type of surf craft acceptable. Australian Julian Wilson and Hawaiian Kai Lenny perfectly embody this philosophy. Julian grew up on Australia's Sunshine Coast, where time in the water relies on a quiver full of variety, while Kai is a modern Hawaiian waterman, guided by Laird Hamilton into an appreciation of all ocean-going craft. While both these gentlemen are at the opposite ends of the spectrum, their thinking is harmonious. Surfing for me started with going to the beach with my family. Um, got two older brothers, my mum and dad, everyone surfed and we go to the beach and take something that looked very similar to what we have on the ground here. Um, from long boards, short boards, stand up boogie boards, whatever fin set up and just have fun. This relationship started living in Sydney. I didn't think I'd be surfing worse ways than what I surf up here most of the time, but it happened. Um, surfing Bondi, trying to surf Bondi on a regular basis is really difficult until I found this board. I always used to stand up on a boogie board when I was younger. It was like the funnest thing ever on shore breaks and trying to get to your feet and get into the closeout barrel without sliding out or, or trying to surf first point on a, on a boogie board standing up. Growing up on Maui, it's the mecca for multiple water sports and the wind is pretty ferocious all year round. And being surrounded by legends of all those sports and kind of the icons of being a waterman, um, you know, I was heavily influenced just by being surrounded by these guys. Um, I feel like, you know, you are who you hang out with. I was hanging out with, you know, a lot of really influential water athletes. And so, I don't know, it always just looks so much fun. And my first wave I had ever ridden um, was surfing on my own and I paddled in by myself. And still to this day, I'm finding that thrill or that stoke by going out to places like Jaws, Mavericks, any big wave around the world. and kind of trying to mimic that first ever drop because it feels the same, you know? That first wave felt like I was dropping into a 50-foot wave today. But in between all that, you know, you don't get 50-foot waves every single day. And uh, to me, you know, it's just about having fun and whatever people think of whatever craft I'm riding. You know, as long as I'm not hurting anybody or affecting anybody's, you know, life or in any way, I'm gonna do what's fun. And I just wanna ride waves. It's all about having different experiences as well. like. Approaching a wave just slightly different every single time. I look at all these sports as spin-offs of surfing. Surfing being the core and these sports are kind of just the spin-offs that have been created throughout time. And why wouldn't I want to do it if I just want to have fun? I think 2014 um, Pipe Masters, they called it off one afternoon. It was really bad, but it was like third reef, 15 foot pipe or whatever. It actually cleaned up almost like straight after and Jamie was out at pipe and it was maxing pipe on that board. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I don't even, I can't comprehend how he was doing it and I can't believe how comfortable he is out at that wave. What's the moral of the story? This is the new church to surf. Don't hate, celebrate. Oh